In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform classification using decision tree. This is our data file. It contains characteristics of contents such as email or comments. So we would like to in here using certain characteristics such as the number of uh, semicolons or exclamation or dollar sign or percent sign or the count of all caps and use them to um, predict if the content is actually a spam. So spam here is our label or our dependent variable. It contains categorical data that is ones and zeros. So one means it's a spam, zero means it is not. We also have a partition column where we already partition the records into training set, validation set, and test set. So we have a total of 4,601 records. We partition the data into 50% training set, 30% validation set, and 20% test set. So to perform the classification using decision tree, we'll click data mining, classify, classification tree. And in the data tab, make sure that we have the correct columns and records selected. So we are selecting from AL1 and all the way to AV4602, including the header. So our selected variables are independent variables. So we're going to put everything except for span, which is our dependent variable, and standard partition, which is the partition column. And the spam will go to the output variable. And make sure we have two classes. Class 1 is the success class, means that it's a spam. Class 0 means it's not a spam. And we want to set the success probability cutoff to be the default value of 0.5 or 50%. If it's greater than 0.5, then we will classify into class 1. Otherwise, it will be class 0. Next, in the parameters tab, we want to click the partition data. We want to use the partition variable, which is our standard partition. Here in the decision tree fitting area, we want to select the records in the terminal nodes and we want to enter 231. This means that the tree branches will start splitting when each branch contains less than 231 observations, which is about 5% of the total observations, which are 4,601 records. And then we want to check the prune using the validation set and we want to click the tree for scoring and then select the best pruned tree and click done. So in the decision tree display area, we want to select show feature importance and in the maximum number of levels, we want to enter seven. So this means that the tree branches will start splitting when level of tree reaches seven. Finally, in the tree to display, we want to display the fully grown tree, the best prune tree, and the minimum error tree. So with all this setting, what we did just now is to first construct a full classification tree on the training data. We will partition by the input variable splitting rules until the resultant branches contain either minimum number of observations, which is 231 observations, or the number of the tree level has reached the maximum level, which is seven in this example. So then it would stop growing the tree and that's the full classification tree. And then we want to prune the full tree so then we can see if our model overfits the training data. So we want to use the best prune tree against our validation data. For the best prune tree, we want to identify the smallest possible tree that achieves the minimum classification error on the validation set. 
and that is the smallest classification tree with a classification error within the one standard error of the classification error of the minimum error tree. So standard error of the mean equals standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size. So in other words, the standard error of the mean is a measure of dispersion of sample means around the population. So by using the standard error in the best prune tree, we accounted for sample error because the validation set is just a sample of the overall population. Therefore, the best prune tree will always be the same size as or smaller than the minimum error tree. In the scoring tab, you want to check detail report, summary report, and leaf charts for the test set. Then click finish. We can also take a look at the training score. In the training score, because this is a classification problem, so there are a few metrics we use in the confusion matrix. The accuracy here is 86%, which is pretty good. And accuracy means all correctly labeled subjects versus all subjects. So we would like to see a higher accuracy. But that's usually not the whole picture. We need to have a balanced class 1 and class 0 error. So we have other measurements such as specificity is the 1 minus class 0 error rate. Specificity means when it predicts no, how often is it correct? So that's true negative versus the actual no. Then we have sensitivity. It's also called recall. Sensitivity is 1 minus class 1 error rate. So in other words, true positive versus the sum of true positive and false negative. Or we can say it's the true positive versus the actual yes. And then we have precision. Precision is when it predicts yes, how often is it correct? In other words, it's a true positive versus the sum of true positive and false positive or true positive versus predicted yes. So finally, we have F1. F1 score is a weighted average of the true positive rate and precision. So it's a better and more balanced measure for performance. So we can see that the F1 score here is 81.3%, which is pretty good for classification model. In the validation score, we can see a consistent F1 score and accuracy. There's a slight higher class 1 error than the class 0 error, but overall it's still not too bad. And let's take a look at the test score. Uh, we have a slightly smaller F1 score in here, but still a 78.2%, which is still pretty good for classification. And the baseline is the random guess of 1 or 0, so that would be 50%. So this is uh, higher than the baseline. And let's also take a look at the charts. In the lift chart, there's a decile chart. So when you look at a decile chart, you want to see a staircase effect. That is, you want the bars to descend in the order from left to right. And this chart is exactly showing this. And this is telling you that the model is beaming your constituents correctly from most likely to respond to the least likely to respond. So a model exhibiting a good staircase that's a chart is one that you can consider moving forward with. Next, let's take a look at the ROC chart. The middle line is the random classifier. And so because we have class 1 and class 0, the middle line is just 45 degree in the middle. And then we see in the fitted classifier, that's our model, and it's above the random classifier. So this is what we would like to see. This is a very good model. The more area under the ROC curve, then we see that the better the model performs. Uh, under the full tree, we can see the full classification tree. So each node will be a selected input variable, such as the number of dollar signs, number of escalations, or number of average all cap words. And each node has a number, which is the decision node. And if the dollar sign number is less than 0 0.05, 
for example, then you go to the left and evaluate the next decision node. And if it's greater than or equal to 0 0.05, then you go to the right and evaluate different number and a different node. Eventually, you will have a branch that terminates and that gives you either 1 or 0. That is the classification of that record. So we can see that the tree height reaches seven different levels and the number of the nodes is 35. And eventually each branch will reach to a classification of one or zero. Let's take a look at the best prune tree. So in the best prune tree, uh, we only see three input variables. They're the most important features in here. The number of dollar sign, number of exhalation, and the number of average all cap words. This tree is much simpler than the full grown tree and only kept the important features. Let's take a look at how do we use this tree for classification. In our data worksheet, this is our first record in the test set. We have a dollar sign of 0 0.054 and we have a escalation of 0 0.164 and then we have a average all cap of 1.671. So let's take a look at our best prune tree chart and see how we can classify this particular record in the test set. So first we take a look at the dollar value for this record is 0 0.054 which is less than 0 0.06 so we go left and next we're going to take a look at the escalation for this record is 0 0.16 which is greater than 0 0.09 so we go right and next we're taking a look at the average all cap which this record has 1.67 which is less than 2.59 so we go left so the classification result is zero class zero means that this is not a spam so our decision tree model classified this particular record as not a spam but let's take a look at our actual results it's actually a spam so this is an example of a classification error made by our model. It happens, and if you recall the confusion matrix, when the actual is class 1 and the model predicted to be class 0, we call it a false negative, which is also a type 2 error. So this is how we uh, use the decision tree for classification.